Hey everyone, I'm Aiden Beaversdorf alongside Simon Shelton and David McAtee. Welcome to 1310 The Nosebleeds. And today we're going to be talking about who, yeah, who will be this upcoming season's Defensive Player of the Year. Simon? I think it's going to be Sauce Gardner. I mean, you talk about the first rookie cornerback to make first team all pro. You know, he he won Defensive Rookie of the Year last year. And I feel like he's, he's, can, he's the best candidate to win Defensive Player of the Year. I mean, he locks down... That whole side of the field, he's great in man, he's great in zone, he's great in stunts, he does everything well, and I just feel like he's the best candidate to win it. All right, David? I think it's Micah Parsons. I think he's the most versatile player on defense in the NFL. He also was a defensive rookie of the year guy, and I think that you need to be able to, and he's just so versatile, I need, you need to be able to get sacks, you need to be able to play good coverage, you need to be able to stop the run for, for you to win defense player of the year, and I think that he has all those things. I think that because if you look at years past, all the guys have been the leading sack guys for Defensive Player of the Year. Corners are a lot more rare to win Defensive Player of the Year. I'm not saying that Sauce Gardner is not a very, very good defensive player. It's just that the award has been biased towards these guys that are racking up sacks and tackles. And I think that Micah Parsons will be that guy this year. I think that he will win Defensive Player of the Year for the first time in his career. Right. I feel like you said he was so versatile last year. I feel like that's not going to be there this year. I mean, he's strictly playing defensive end. I, they might drop him back into coverage every now and then, but he's not going to be playing inside linebacker anymore. And I feel like if he's just getting, you know, the same numbers he did last year without all the, you know, run stops and tackles from linebacker, it's going to diminish his chances. And I feel like as if he's at a defensive end position, just like Nick Bosa, teams will be ready for it. And they'll know exactly where he is and they won't have to worry about him dropping back every every play they'll know where he is trying to rush the passer and I feel like there's so many ways that Micah Parsons can be stopped by by offensive linemen and I just think mm. there's not that many ways you can stop a cornerback mm. from locking up a receiver so you're saying because Parsons is just on the line that and Gardner is more all over the field and coverage and everything that's why you think a defensive back is has a better shot at deep boy than right, and I just feel like Nick Bosa. I mean, even I feel like Nick Bosa would get the award over Michael Parsons this year just because he's played for longer and he's established that he will be great at defensive end. I will say I don't completely agree that he's going to only play defensive end. I think like Dan Quinn will be smart enough to drop him back in linebacker every once in a while because I think Dan Quinn's a great defensive coordinator and he'll know how to use Micah very well. And I will say you said that you know you can't stop a receiver from locking down. Can't stop Sauce Gardner from blocking out an interception. You're right, but if you don't throw at him, he does not get the stats, and therefore he, you're not going to get defensive player of the year. If you are Micah Parsons, you control your stats, and in a way that, for example, if you beat that left tackle off the line, you get behind, you get the sack, you can control that. Sauce Gardner cannot control if the ball if the ball comes to him, if it's if it's a good throw or not. All he can do is lock down the receiver. And if he's not getting the stats, he's not getting the award. It's a, it's just a lot harder to win this award as a corner. The last guy to do it was Stephon Gilmore on the best defense in the league, and that was a good four years ago. So I, I do think that Micah Parsons is going to win this award this year. See, I feel like that's why they have advanced stats now. They have pro football focus, who they, they will analyze the play, even if it's not thrown to them. Every single player on the field is analyzed. And when, Steph, when Sauce Gardner is locking down somebody and they don't throw to him, that's upgrades his stats that that makes you a better cornerback when they literally can't even throw to you so i feel like the stat the interceptions the tackles the passes defended that's not the only stat now there's if you, are you in the right place are you on the right hip are you playing the right technique it's all kinds of things that you need to be ready for when you're at cornerback and those things show now now that we have those upgraded stats all right yeah i like both y'all's points um I think that's actually considering they're two different positions, but um, I think Micah Parsons is much more, I wouldn't say much more versatile, but he can be on the field anywhere. And Gardner can too. Gardner's, I'm assuming, a lot faster. Um, but Parsons can get into the backfield and make it miserable for a QB. But I'm assuming it's also miserable for a wide receiver. And uh, we have someone who'd like to ask a question. Hey guys, what's up? Big fan of the nose, please. Listening on every morning on the way to work. Uh, so you guys had mentioned uh, Micah, Gardner, Bosa, and Watt. So I'm going to hit y'all with this question. Since they're all four great de elite defensive players, and they all have one special, a special talent in them. Which player out of the four would you want to start your defense with if you had to choose and why? Out of Parsons, Bosa, Gardner? Yes. Okay. Out of those four. I'll start. I think... 
I want to start with Parsons, but let me tell you why. I think Parsons is the most versatile, but that doesn't mean he's the best player. I think Parsons will make the most impact in terms of getting to the quarterback, but that doesn't mean he'll stop the whole offense. I do think that Sauce Gardner would be better if you throw him into an off, into a defense, but not start a defense with him. I would want to start a defense around Michael Parsons, not around Sauce Gardner. I would agree. I would want a defense that has a disruptor, a guy that can really get in the backfield, a guy that will wreck any offensive game plan. And that, to me, I, I, I would agree that Parsons is really, really good at that, but a healthy T.J. Watt would do the exact same thing. Right. If we forget that he was hurt a lot of last year, right. people still talked about him a lot. So I think a, a, a healthy T.J. Watt, Micah Parsons, and, and obviously Nick Bosa is at a very high level. I think those three guys were – I mean, it's a very tough choice. I'll go with one of those three guys and not Sauce, just because I think that that can help a defense so much if the quarterback has a very limited amount of time to throw in a very condensed pocket. All right. I agree with both of y'all. I, I would choose Parsons. Um, Gardner is a DB. I feel like he could be the captain of the secondary, but I would easily choose Parsons to be the captain of my front seven, um, considering he kind of plays both of those positions. And... Um, He's all over the place, and I think he's a great leader. Um, thank you for listening to the Nosebleeds. We will see you all next time.